In this video, I'm gonna take you through the construction cost management process. The goal is to give you a step-by-step -step guide of what it takes to achieve financial success on a construction project. So we're gonna look at both estimating, setting your budget correctly, and then delivering the project for less than this budget. Let's start by giving this process a simple definition. So construction cost management is about ensuring the planned costs are less than the actual costs. So if you're a construction business owner or work for a construction contractor, then what does this mean for you? So for construction contractors, the goal is to secure a project at a profitable price so you estimate the cost correctly, and then you can deliver this project for less than your estimate. That way you ensure you generate profit. We can break down the construction cost management process into two sub processes. There's the estimate cost process and the monitor and control cost. So estimate costs is first, we need to accurately work out how much something is going to cost to do. Then once we go deliver the project, we need to monitor, control, and manage costs to ensure that we then complete the project for less than what we originally estimated. So cost management, we can break down into the two sub processes of estimating costs and then monitoring and controlling costs during project delivery. So we map out the construction cost management process across the stages and life cycle of a construction project. We start with the tender phase where we need to estimate the cost to complete a project so we can secure work from a client. We then move into the pre-construction phase where we take this estimate, our allowance to complete the work, we need to transfer it into a budget and then also manage any design and procurement activities to ensure we're going to achieve our budget. We then start construction. We start the physical works on site. We need to manage the works and monitor and control costs effectively. So we're doing the work for less than what we originally estimated. And then when we finish the project, we want to close out all our construction cost control activities, but also capture any important lessons learned and data. So we can feed this back into the process and more accurately improve the performance of our construction estimating function. Let's start by looking at the first component of the construction cost management process, which is estimating costs. So the goal of estimating is to accurately calculate the costs of completing construction work. So we take a set of drawings, project specifications, requirements, we need to turn these into a dollar value of the cost of all the different resources we need to complete the works as defined in the project requirements. So the estimating process, we take a set of drawings and specifications, we turn these into a dollar figure. Before we can start talking about how to put an estimate together or the estimating process, we first need to understand the components of an estimate. So before we can begin calculating costs, we need to understand the components of project costs. So we can break down project costs into two key categories. We've got our direct costs, the costs of completing physical construction works, and then we've got our indirect costs, the costs of managing, supervising, overseeing the work. So with our direct costs, each direct cost item will consist of labor, plant, materials, subcontract costs. So for example, if we need to pour a concrete foundation, we've got the costs of the laborers needed to do it. We've got the costs of the concrete pump, the other equipment we need to complete the work, there'll be cost of materials, the cost of the concrete, the reinforcement, the formwork, and then any subcontract costs. So for example, say we're using a crane to lift the equipment into position, we'll have subcontract costs associated with that. Then we've got our indirect costs, the cost to manage and supervise the works. So these we can break down into two key categories. We've got our non-recurring indirect costs, which are one-off costs we occur, for example, setting up our site facilities. Then we've got our recurring indirect costs. So these are ongoing costs throughout the duration of the project. For example, the salary of the project manager who's overseeing the work. We combine our indirect and direct costs together. We get our total project costs. And then to work out our sell price, where well, we charge our client for doing the work, we need to add on our profit margin, any corporate business running overheads, and any risk and opportunity. Okay, so how do we create this cost estimate? Well, the process for putting together an estimate is relatively straightforward. 
However, it's going to be very specific to the type of project you're working on, how you actually implement this process. First step when creating an estimate is to estimate your direct costs, costs of completing the physical construction work. Once we estimate our direct costs, we can then work out our indirect costs, the cost to manage and supervise the works. We then work out our risk and opportunity, apply a profit margin and markup, and then get a price we submit, a sell price we submit to the client. First step in this process is calculating our direct costs. So how do we calculate our direct costs? Well, the first thing we need to do is set up a work breakdown structure. We need to decompose the project scope into component pieces. We want to create a list of every single activity we need to complete to complete the project. We then want to complete a quantity takeoff. So for each of these activities, what are the key quantities we need to know? For example, for pouring a concrete foundation, We'll need to know how many meters squared of formwork we need, how much reinforcement we need, the total volume of concrete, the area of the slab, these sorts of things. Then once we've worked out the quantities against the activity, we can estimate the cost of that activity. So we can determine the plant, labor, materials, and subcontract costs for each of these activities. And then we combine them all together. So we create a list of all the tasks we need to complete to complete the project. We work out the key quantities against each of these tasks. We estimate the costs, completing all the activities, and we summarize and put these together. After calculating our direct costs, so the costs of all the physical construction activities, we can move on to creating and calculating our indirect costs, so the cost to supervise and manage these works. So we first need to identify our indirect costs. We need to work out all the applicable management, supervision, overhead costs to manage the project. We then want to calculate first our recurring indirect costs. So based on the duration of the project, what are the ongoing recurring costs we need to incur? Staff salaries, temporary fencing, a security guard at night. Maybe we need to hire a forklift for offloading materials. So those all go into our indirect costs. We need to calculate our non-recurring indirect costs. So these are the one-off costs like setting up site facilities that we occur at a single point during the project and we'd calculate these in a similar way to how we calculate our direct costs. After calculating our direct and indirect costs, we've calculated our total project costs. The next thing we need to do is calculate our risk and opportunity. So work out any uncertain events or conditions that can have an impact on cost and make allowances for these that we refer to as contingency and then apply a profit margin. So we put, apply a markup on our cost to get a price we charge our client. The markup we apply or the margin difference is what's left over for the business as profit. We then want to submit our estimate. So to submit our estimate, we should first do a check. We want to make sure there's no errors, inconsistencies, that we haven't missed any scope and that we're happy with the price we're going to be submitting because eventually we're going to be signing a contract to say that we can deliver the project for this amount of money. So we want to be 100% certain that we've got enough money in our budget to complete the project and then we should document this in some sort of letter of offer where we write here's our estimate here's a breakdown of our estimate here's the allowances we've made and here are the key exclusions so then we can submit this to our client and hopefully secure the project okay so we won the project we submitted our letter of offer the client awarded us the contract what's the next thing we need to do well, now we've estimated the costs we need to complete the project for less than these estimated costs. So we need to control costs. Goal of the cost control process is to deliver the project for less than our estimate. We've got a budget. We've got a fixed lump sum amount. We need to complete all the construction activities for. Now we need to go and do them and make sure we spend less than our budget. Cost control, we can break down into two different subsets. We've got our pre-construction cost control, which I like to think of as setting up the project for success. And then we've got construction cost control. So within pre-construction cost control, we take our estimate, we turn it into a budget, and we also need to manage any design and procurement activities to ensure we're not overspending our budget. Then we move into the construction phase where we spend the majority of our budget and we need to coordinate and effectively use resources. We need to monitor and control how much we're spending versus how much work we're getting done. And we need to manage change. Changes will arise during the course of the project. We need to be effectively managing them so we're not overspending our budget. So the first 
thing we need to do is to control cost during project execution is transfer our estimate into a budget. So our estimate is built up to capture cost. It's different to the way we're going to be spending money. So that's why we need to take this estimate and turn it into a budget. A budget is a tool for tracking and managing expenditure and the structure is going to be fundamentally different to our estimate. The reason this is, is the way we estimate costs, the way we calculate the cost of doing something is different to how we track costs. I'll give you a very specific example. For example, when we're calculating the amount we're going to spend on personal protective equipment, PPE, during the life cycle of the project, estimators typically calculate this on a per man hour worked basis. So they might allow a dollar, two dollars per hour work during the project to allow for PPE. When we're spending money on PPE during project execution, we want to know how much is in our budget for PPE and how much we've spent today. So it's different to how we've estimated the cost. We're not going to track PPE expenditure per hour. No, we just want to have a, a lump sum amount for which we can draw down on and as we spend money on PPA. Once we've set up our budget, we also need to manage design costs. So design is the development of the project technical solution. And depending on the specific scope of the project, we may be responsible for developing the design. If we're developing the design, we need to manage the design process to ensure that what we're designing, what we're specifying we need to build, we can build for within our estimate. One of the easiest ways to save money, but also blow our budget is through the design process. If we design something that's cheap to build, we can save a lot of money during construction. But if we design something that's expensive to build, it's got a whole lot of costly and unnecessary features that we didn't need to include, it's a very easy way to blow our budget. So we want to be managing the design process to ensure that what we're specifying we need to build, we can build for within our budget and specifically we want to be avoiding scope creep. So scope creep is the addition of unnecessary costly features to the design. The other thing that happens during the pre-construction phase that has a massive impact on total project cost is procurement. Procurement is the process of finding and acquiring the external goods and services we need to complete the project. We want to manage the procurement process so we're finding the best possible subcontractors and suppliers at the best possible cost. We need to pay attention to our project budget, to how much we've got to spend, and make sure we're managing the procurement process properly so we find the best possible subcontractors and suppliers at the best possible cost. One of the biggest ways we can save money on a project is by finding high quality subcontractors and suppliers, running competitive procurement processes, competitive tender processes to find the best possible subcontractors and suppliers at the lowest possible cost. After the pre-construction phase, we move into the construction phase where we begin spending large amounts of money to complete the project work. The goal here with construction cost control is to efficiently and effectively use resources so we're getting the most work done possible at the lowest possible cost. This comes down to efficiently planning and effectively using resources. So we want to be using short range planning, coordinating works on site effectively to avoid delays and coordination issues and maintain productivity. So if we've allowed for certain productivities where we've estimated costs, for example, if we're estimating entrenching activity and we've, we've budgeted to do 50 meters per day, our goal is to efficiently use resources so we achieve that productivity or greater. The goal is to complete the project activities at the best possible productivity rate. As we're spending money, we want to monitor how much we're spending. We want to keep track of every dollar we're spending to understand how much work we're getting done, how much we're spending, to identify sources of overexpenditure. And once we've found these sources of overexpenditure, do something about them. So the goal here is to set up a cost tracking system where we're tracking every cent we're spending. We're matching this to how much work we're getting done and we're using a tool like Earn Value Management to get a comprehensive, holistic understanding of how the project is performing and identify cost blowouts early when we can still do something about them. The final thing we need to do to effectively manage construction costs is to manage change. Now, change is inevitable in projects. Every project you ever work on, 
something unexpected, unforeseen will happen or there will be a change requested by the client. Our goal in construction cost management is to effectively manage change to ensure we're not doing additional unnecessary work without getting paid for it. So we want to ensure through contracts that we're claiming any entitlements for changes to the project scope, changes for the way the project was estimated, the scope we agreed to do with the client, and then if this changes during project delivery, we claim our entitlement. So there'll be two key types of claims we make. There'll be claimed variations where the client has delayed us and we've claimed additional money from them or a client's requested change from us. They've asked us to do an initial additional work and we're quoting to them to do this additional work. So we want to understand the project scope and boundaries, what we've allowed to do, what we've signed a contract to say we're going to do, then we need to manage these changes effectively and claim our entitlements. Okay, let's quickly summarize what was covered. So construction cost management is all about ensuring that our projects are a financial success by ensuring that we deliver the project work for less than the costs we estimated to do it for. Construction cost management has two core processes. Estimating costs, accurately co estimating how much it's going to cost to do something, and then controlling costs, delivering the project work for less than our budget. Both of these functions are critically important to project success, and we need to be thinking about and managing money throughout the entire life cycle of the project to ensure that we're delivering the work for less than what we planned. 